the third week of November has been an interesting one for golf for sure, though there are definitely some pieces of news that are likely to get you down, like Pat Perez talking about his hatred for Phil Mickelson. Most of the buzz is positive. Lexi Thompson came in at second place in the Pelican Women's Championship, while Nelly Korda came out on top, and we'll be discussing all that and more in today's video. First up, Perez hates Mickelson. Pat Perez and Phil Mickelson have had a pretty close connection over the years. They both grew up in San Diego, just six years apart in age, and both played the same golf courses while in junior golf. It doesn't stop there, though. The two even attended Arizona State University, though their experiences might not have been alike. Eventually, the two made their way to the PGA Tour and spent about 20 years or so playing with the organization. Mickelson had much more success during his time there, winning 40 more times than Perez, who only has three victories with the PGA. Now the two have been scooped up by the Live Golf Series, but the fact that they've been in the same institutions and organizations might be the only thing that connects them. Perez has gone on the record to say that he has a hate for Mickelson that goes beyond anything other people might have for him. You'll never see the two of them together in pictures from the Live pre-tournament parties, which just proves that there's tension there that Perez says he'll never try and ease. Next up, Perez opens up to Harmon. Perez most recently talked about his opinion of Mickelson on Claude Harmon's podcast, Son of a Butch. Given that Harmon coaches both Perez and fellow Live player Dustin Johnson, it's no surprise that he'd feel comfortable opening up about his dislike of Mickelson. You'll also have to consider the fact that Perez is generally pretty open when he talks to the public, so when he discussed Mickelson, his emotions were laid bare, though he did keep the details private. This isn't the first time he's discussed this rift with the 52-year-old. He first talked about it on Colt Noss' podcast, when the discussion in the media was primarily on Mickelson apologizing for his pointed critique of the Liv's Saudi backing after joining up with the organization. Like many who weren't supportive of the Liv, Perez criticized Mickelson for being a hypocrite, calling him out for a terrible apology. But when talking with Harmon, Perez said that that interview had been heavily edited, with much of what he said about Mickelson being cut. He then went on to clarify that his hatred for the man isn't really about his association with or initial critique of the Liv. The rift between them is much more personal, but he said that people will never know the real story, as he's not going to go over it again. That probably implies that he talked about it on Nas' show, but the truth got cut out. Now for let's delve a little deeper into his thoughts. Perez said that Mickelson had crossed a line and that action was unforgivable. Mickelson apparently knows what he did wrong and has apologized for it, but that's not enough because he's known the California-born player for so long. He apparently knew that the thing that would cause a rift between the two of them was going to happen, but he still went through with whatever put things into motion. And that's why Perez can't let things go, is the fact that there was clear intent behind his wrongdoing. Still, Perez wants to clarify that there's nothing about the whole live controversy behind his feelings. He addressed the fact that people think Mickelson is greedy, saying that he doesn't believe that's the case. When Mickelson criticized the PGA Tour for how they were handling the rivalry with Liv, Perez didn't really see anything wrong with that. He told Harmon that Mickelson was entirely correct for pointing out the issues with what the PGA was doing or not doing. But even if Mickelson was right to criticize the PGA, when he discussed the deal the Liv had made, he upset a lot of players, Perez included. Those comments he made about the deal put the whole tour in jeopardy, making players uncertain about their decisions. It's clear from how Perez talks about Mickelson that he's not letting his personal vendetta cloud his judgment, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have one. Moving on to Perez's relationship with Liv, Perez is one of the many players that had initially voiced their support for the PGA Tour amidst the brewing rivalry, but eventually signed on with the Liv for a large fee. This first season, he managed to make $8 million in seven events without reaching the top 10 in any of them. Compare that to the $28 million that he'd made in 515 starts with the PGA Tour, and you can at least understand why he decided to split. He's been pretty open about the fact that he left because of the money. Harmon asked him about his thoughts on why he's one of the main players being attacked for switching over. In response, Perez says that people think his career with the Tour was much better than it actually was. He'd held his card for 21 seasons, so it makes sense that people would think he owes something to the organization, but he says that he's a realist and figured that his career wasn't really worth holding on to. He then went on to defend the Liv, saying that people who haven't seen events on the new Tour should give it a shot. Though it may not be screened on live television, the experience on the field is great, with the fans who actually go out loving the experience. He expressed that the fan interaction with the players is great, and overall the environment is like a mini waste management party, referencing the relaxed Phoenix Open event. Coming up, Grant has been banned from U.S. travel. At just 23 years of age, Lynn Grant has made a huge name for herself in the world of women's golf. This year has been particularly amazing for the young Swede, coming out victorious in four events in the Ladies European Tour. Those wins put her in the lead in the Order of Merits and secured her a position at number 25 in the world rankings. She's also played six LPGA tournaments, four of which she'd reached the 
top 10 in. Those events pushed her into the top 60, which made her eligible to play in the CME Group Tour Championship. Unfortunately, that eligibility doesn't make much of a difference, as she won't be able to play in the CME due to travel restrictions. Grant hasn't been vaccinated yet, and as per current restrictions, won't be able to travel to the United States to actually participate in the event. She released a statement explaining the situation, also trying to get ahead of questions about why she hadn't been vaccinated yet. Her response was simply to say that she wanted to keep the details of that private with her family and team. Let's talk about the Pelican Women's Championship. At the Pelican Women's Championship this month, two golfers stood out among all the others. They were Lexi Thompson and Nellie Corda. Thompson and Corda were going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, with the former being the underdog in the rivalry. Corda started off the final round a shot behind Thompson, but managed multiple birdies in the front nine to make things level. Thompson wasn't making things easy, though, making several birdies of her own, though she did struggle in the back nine. In the end, she lost by a single shot, as Corda continued to hit birdies at the 16th and 17th holes. After the round was done and her runner-up position was cemented, she still seemed to be in high spirits. She told interviewers that if this had happened in previous years, it would have gotten to her, but that's not how she approaches things anymore. When a mistake was made, she just kept telling herself that getting upset would just make things worse. Though she did end up coming in second, that mindset definitely kept her in the game until the very end. Lastly, let's talk about Ogletree's first win. Andy Ogletree might not be having the best time in terms of securing his future career, considering he wasn't granted a release to play in the live following his first event and has been suspended by the PGA until January 2023, it's kind of surprising that he still has something to feel good about. Thanks to his participation in the first event of the Live Golf Series, he was granted an exemption for the Asian Tours International Series events. The Tours event in Egypt was exactly what he needed. He managed to score 23 under par, beating runner-up Bernd Weisberger by a four-shot margin to get first place, sending him a check for $270,000. This marks the first time he's ever won a professional golf tournament. Following his victory, he jumped up from number 1,714 to number 808 in the world rankings. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Perez will ever let go of his hatred for Mickelson? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.